today I'm going to talk about Handshake. Uh, I'll share what it is and, you know, why you might care about it, uh, what you can do with it, and uh, show off a demo or two on, you know, what's possible. Um, and for those who aren't familiar, Handshake is a decentralized naming protocol. Uh, it's actually specifically meant for decentralized DNS. Uh, so, you know, similar to a lot of other naming protocols that have been discussed today, um, but one thing that's pretty interesting about Handshake is it's really focused on DNS and specifically root naming. Uh, so, for example, if you take a website like google.com, the root TLD of that domain name, .com, is the, uh, basically the parent of every domain name under .com. And the way that DNS currently works today is that there is an organization called ICANN, which basically governs who gets what TLD. And then each TLD individually is owned by a different entity. So for example, VeriSign owns .com. They're you know, a for-profit public company worth billions of dollars, and they make a lot of money selling .com domains. Uh, .org is owned by another organization. Um, and then you, know, you have some TLDs like .ai, which is owned by um, the uh, a, a government basically, um, and not a single you know company or uh, nonprofit organization. And the way that new TLDs get registered today is well, right now it's not actually possible to register new TLDs. But when ICANN allows new TLDs to get registered, there's an application process that costs two hundred thousand dollars minimum. Uh, and again, it's all organized under this uh, existing kind of uh, centralized system that. Uh, was the only architecture available at the time that DNS was created. But now with blockchain technologies, we have a uh, new architecture available. And Handshake capitalizes on that and has created a decentralized naming protocol that basically allows anyone to register their own TLD. And the interesting thing about it is the uh, adoption is, of course, still very early. But it's already gotten um, integrations with a number of uh, traditional domain registrars that you probably have heard of, like 101domain.com, uh, and circa.com, and epic.com. And uh, already, actually, Namecheap has been recently getting into Handshake, and they uh, purchased a Handshake name for uh, $250,000. So they're kind of investing um, heavily into it. Uh, so that's what Handshake is at a nutshell. And I'm just going to show off real quick what you can do with it, because it's, it's interesting if, if you think about it just at the surface level, it's just for you know, decentralized TLDs. Uh, but really what Handshake does is it basically just puts a root name on the blockchain and allows you to associate arbitrary data with it. Uh, that's cryptographically secure um, you know, it, it, through a mechanism that works very similarly to how Bitcoin works. And you can use that for a number of different use cases. You can use that, you know, even outside of like a TLD. Normally, you can use it for a personal website. Uh, you can even use it as a decentralized username. So this is Namebase, which is uh, the company that I run. Uh, I'm the CEO of Namebase. And it's uh, basically an easy way to use Handshake if you've never used it before. Um, and you'll notice in the bottom left here, it says connected to Handshake DNS. Uh, so we run a DNS resolver for Handshake that makes it easy to connect to it and use Handshake as your root DNS. Um, so what I mean by that is if I go to Nick Carter slash, it'll resolve to Nick Carter's uh, personal uh, website, which is, uh, we call this a D-link. It's basically like a little link tree alternative using handshake names. Um, and some of you might be familiar with Nick Carter. He's a pretty popular, you know, crypto Twitter personality. And so he has set up his own website at his uh, Nick Carter TLD uh, right there. And the uh, interesting thing about that is that you can actually just type in Nick Carter slash in your browser uh, when you're connected to Handshake DNS, like I mentioned, um, and it'll just resolve. And of course, you can also use a name, uh, a TLD, like a normal TLD, where you have a subdomain at it. So right here, I'm going to welcome.nb. NB is a TLD that we own on Handshake. And then we set up this uh, subdomain to resolve to this little uh, you know, static website right here. And then if you're not connected to Handshake, uh, which by the way, is very easy to do in order to connect, all you just got to do is go to your network settings. Um, and then you just go and change your DNS resolvers to add these two numbers right here. And then you'll be connected. 
but that makes it difficult to share your name on the internet because if other people aren't connected to it by default, they're not going to be able to type in Nick Carter slash and just go and visit it. And so what you can uh, share instead is we have a gateway at hns.to. So if I go to tiashan.hns.to, this will resolve to my personal D-Link, um, which you can see right here. And it's fairly straightforward. And I mentioned before that the names can be used in a broader context than just you know, traditional DNS and TLDs. Uh, and what, my, what I mean by that is that you can use it for um, you know, decentralized usernames for decentralized authentication. And so what we've done at uh, news.namebase.io, it's a, a forum, uh, it's basically like a normal you know, web 2.0 forum, except the cool thing is that it allows you to use your handshake name to log in to websites. Uh, so I'm just gonna go in here and you'll notice that the um, website URL went from news.namebase.io to OIDC. Um, and actually, it's, let me see if I can get this to go slower because I already logged in and so it just did it quickly for me. It might just already be cached. Um, oh yeah, but you'll see here. So now I'm at oidc.namebase.io, which is completely separate from news.namebase.io. Uh, and this is where my, uh, basically my credentials for tiashan.namebase are stored. And I'm using it to go and authenticate to news.namebase.io. Basically, uh, at a high level, what's happening is news.namebase.io is issuing a challenge request for me to sign. And when I go to oidc.namebase.io, I am going to sign that message and then it'll redirect me back to the forum so that I can go and uh, basically verify that I'm um, actually the owner of tiashan.namebase. And this site will then go and query handshake behind the scenes and make sure that the signature is a valid signature. Um, so this is how you can actually even use handshake names for decentralized usernames. And uh, for a developer, this is actually pretty interesting. It's, it's kind of similar to how you would use, you know, an ENS name or a supple domains name uh, to, uh, you know, use as decentralized usernames. But Something that's very cool is the TLDs on Handshake are all managed on chain. The SLDs, as we call them, so the second level names, the subdomains, these are all managed off chain. And so what's possible is if you want to have you know, maximum security, maximum decentralization, you can have your uh, decentralized username information all stored on chain uh, and manage it that way. However, if you're a developer and you're trying to onboard users and you want to give them all their own decentralized usernames, um, that can be very costly. Uh, although on handshake names, uh, you know, are, are much cheaper to re register than on you know a chain like Ethereum because handshake is built specifically for naming, and so all the transactions are all for uh, basically registering names on chain. And so you can register names for as little as you know one to ten cents uh, right now. But if you're trying to onboard millions of users, that that can still add up uh, quite quickly. And so. What you can do is, in this case, what we've done is we've pointed Namebase to a, which is a TLD that we own on Handshake, to a name server. And then we store the records of uh, the second level names on that name server. And you can imagine as a developer, then what you can do is you can create a uh, application that uses decentralized usernames. And for the majority of users, you can just give them a free username, right? Like let's say you own, you know, dot app name, you can just give them username dot app name and they can use that by default. And then if they want to go and maximize your portability and decentralization, they can go and get their own, you know, root level name and use that themselves. And the application will still just work as normal. Um, and the analogy is it's kind of similar to getting an email address, right? You can go and get a Gmail address for free and then it's going to be at gmail.com or you can register your own domain name, uh, which costs a little bit more and then go, but it's also more customizable. And then you can go and use that as your email address instead. Um, and so this is something that's possible using handshake names today, um, which you're seeing this live demo. And then if you're interested in actually implementing it, we have docs at docs.namebase.io, which basically shows off how to, uh, one, create like a simple decentralized website, like I showed off here, um, and then two, how to use handshake names for the decentralized authentication 
um, which can be used um, you know, for, for basically any application that's trying to leverage decentralized usernames. And I'll say one other uh, point about Handshake for, in case there's any non-developers here or just people who are kind of uh, just interested in the decentralized username space in general and, and collecting, um, something that's been very interesting emergently is just the fact that um, a lot of people have been collecting Handshake names, which is kind of a weird thing because you think, oh, these are just like TLDs. So like, why would, we collect, why would they be collecting them? Um, but a lot of uh, not just like crypto enthusiasts, but traditional domain industry enthusiasts have gone into uh, collecting handshake names. And so what we've been seeing um, at Namebase is we have a, a basically a secondary marketplace for the names. And uh, basically it's been growing exponentially for the past 12 months. Um, June was the second highest month of volume ever. Uh, basically the volume has been growing at 32% month over month for 12 months straight. And there's a really interesting market arising from these names um, that was kind of surprising. Like we didn't really expect this to happen at all, but a lot of people are selling names. Um, you know, the person who sold .p uh, for Namecheap, they bought it for like $5,000 and then sold it for $250,000 uh, six months later. Um, and a lot of people are actually having like 100x sales or 1,000x sales. Um, and you'll see even in the, the marketplace today, I'll just scroll down uh, to a name I was looking at earlier, um, you'll see this double emoji name, which is using the browser's uh, punycode rendering, which is basically turning uh, an alphanumeric string into an emoji. Uh, this name was originally bought in December of 2020 for uh, basically uh, zero H&S. Um, you know, the, the first person, the top bidder was two, 10 H&S, and then the second bidder was uh, zero HNS right here. And so they actually pay the second highest bid, which is zero HNS. And then they later sold it, um, you know, less than a month later for 12 HNS. And then the person who bought it then sold it a few months later for 400 HNS. So there's this really interesting market. So if you're a non developer, um, I would check that out because a lot of people are kind of getting into it and just using it as a game, basically, where they can make money from it. Uh, but then as a developer, something that's really cool is now that there's a lot of people who are actually registering these names and collecting them, you can build uh, DAP experiences around them, leveraging the uh, decentralized uh, authentication, like I mentioned, or just you know creating experiences around creating decentralized websites.